So one of the most intense conditions that can cause severe forms of dry eye disease is called Sjogren's syndrome. So in this video, we're gonna go over what is Sjogren's syndrome, how your doctors can test for it, along with how it affects the eye and potential treatments for Sjogren's syndrome. That's today's video, let's take a look. Hello and welcome, this is Dr. Allen here from the Dr. Eye Health Show, helping you learn all about the eyes and vision. If you're new here to the channel and you like to learn about the eyes, different eye diseases and their treatments, then definitely consider hitting that subscribe button down below so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Now today we're talking about Sjogren's Syndrome, and if you've never heard of Sjogren's Syndrome before, it's an autoimmune condition that usually affects women in their middle age, between 40 and 50 years old, but can still affect men, and interestingly enough, I've seen some younger women in their early 20s even develop this condition. Now, Sjogren's syndrome, again, autoimmune condition, so your body's attacking itself. And in this condition, it affects your lacrimal gland as well as your parotid gland and can ultimately affect any mucous membrane on the body. Now, some of the most common symptoms, because your lacrimal gland produces your tears of your eye, people develop really severe forms of dry eye disease. Technically, it forms what's called aqueous deficient dry eye, meaning you're not producing enough tears, in contrast to evaporative dry eye, which is the tears evaporate too quickly. But there could also be mixed forms of this for the dry eye. Other individuals will have decreased parotid gland secretion. That's what produces your saliva. And so individuals can have really severe forms of dry mouth. They'll have difficulty swallowing, things like swallowing their food. They'll have to drink water while eating, or they'll have to wake up in the middle of the night because their mouth is so dry and get a glass of water. Some people even have such dry mouths that they end up developing oral sores and increased amounts of cavities in their teeth. And this is something that dentists will often pick up. Now, on top of just having these types of symptoms, your doctor will confirm the suspicion of a diagnosis of Sjogren's syndrome by ordering a blood test. On that blood test, they'll order an anti-SSA, an anti-SSB, also known as Rowan Law, as well as rheumatoid factor and ANA. Those are typically the blood tests that are ordered. And even though sometimes uh, yes, they'll come back positive, confirming the suspicion, suspicion of Sjogren's syndrome. Sometimes they'll even come back negative. But if the symptoms are strong enough, then your doctor may still make the diagnosis of Sjogren's syndrome. Now, unfortunately, Sjogren's syndrome at this time does not have a cure. It's not fully understood, but it is associated with other diseases, so, such as uh, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, as well as having a higher risk of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma later in life. And that is one of the reasons why anybody with this condition should be followed by a rheumatologist, as they're gonna be able to monitor and prescribe medications to help with the symptoms. In addition, because the dry eye is so severe for these individuals, we actually don't even call it dry eye. We call it keratoconjunctivitis sicca. It's like a whole other class of dry eye because it's not just the eyes being red and irritated, feeling like the sandy or a foreign body sensation. It gets to a point where there's so much inflammation and so much dryness that it starts to cause damage to the surface of the eye. This can cause fluctuating vision early on, but because the damage can occur, it can cause scarring that can even lead to permanent damage and permanent vision loss. I personally think it's a little funny when I read medical journals that say just treating with artificial tears is appropriate because myself and many other eye doctors disagree. It is so severe that these individuals usually are not satisfied with just using lubricating eye drops throughout the day. They often need additional medications. One of the most commonly prescribed medications that I ever see for these types of patients are using some type of topical cyclosporin. This is in the brand names, either known as Restasis or another one called Sequo, which is a little bit newer, but that is to help the lacrimal gland start to produce some of its own tears. In addition, there often are other forms of treatments that are used for this form of dry eye disease, such as punctal plugs, which is where we put a little silicone plug in the lower lacrimal ducts, uh, sometimes even the top lacrimal ducts, so that the tears that are formed on the eye rest longer on the surface and, again, help with those dry eye symptoms. Some people even need more advanced treatments because of the inflammatory response that's drummed up from the severe dryness. Some of these treatments that I have performed here in the office are such as amniotic membranes 
as well as using topical steroids more long term or even using special type of scleral contact lenses to hold the fluid within the contact lens to the surface of the eye to help with the dryness symptoms. Now if you are feeling overwhelmed about Sjogren's syndrome or the different treatments for dry eye then I encourage you to first leave a comment in the section below of any questions you have about Sjogren's syndrome about dry eye and if you have Sjogren's syndrome yourself go ahead and just share your story and experience about it. I'd love to be able to connect hear from you and I do take your comments and suggestions seriously and hopefully uh, those any questions that you have will help drive future content for this channel. If you do have other questions about dry eye and want a little bit more, I do have a full series on it and you can check that out by clicking or tapping the screen up over here to the side. Or if you want to learn a little bit more about a different subject about eye care, you can click or tap the screen down over here. Again, this is Dr. Allen here from Dr. Eye Health, helping you learn all about the eyes and vision. Keep an eye on it and we'll talk to you soon.